and I had no clue because I've been put in the role of being a Dr. Scarpetta, being a police detective, being a medical examiner, where I can't manufacture the evidence. I'm dependent on what really happened, what really is found, and I had no idea how agonizing that is. Like the best detectives I've ever worked with, she never lets go. She just goes on and on and on, and she'll get to the bottom of it. And I think she's taken the Jack the Ripper case further than I've seen anybody else take it. And then came maybe the greatest breakthrough in the investigation when I received a letter from the Manchester City Art Gallery in the UK. Dear Patricia Cornwall, I was very interested to read in the British national press about your fascinating research into the alleged connection between Jack the Ripper and W.R. Sickert. We have a painting in our collections by Sickert called Jack the Ripper's Bedroom. I do not exaggerate when I say that the atmosphere is so heavy one could cut it with a knife. I was shocked. I wondered whether it was really possible that a painting by Walter Sickert called Jack the Ripper's Bedroom could have been forgotten about. But when I called around, I found that it did not appear in any of the Sickert catalogs and seemed unknown to the art historical establishment. Was this the final tease? Sickert actually telling the world that he was Jack the Ripper? The title is remarkable in itself because one doesn't think of Jack the Ripper as having a bedroom. A bedroom is a quiet, domestic sanctum. And to, to link those words, Jack the Ripper, with bedroom, it seems such an extraordinary and brutal juxtaposition, really. What you would begin to get in this Ripper case are layers of evidence that all point or are consistent with Walter Sicker. Then you get circumstantial evidence, all consistent with Walter Sickert, Jack the Ripper. You get his own antics. You get layer after layer after layer, and you start saying, how can this be anything but? Because if this is a coincidence, it's the most incredible coincidence I've ever seen in my life. My heart is beating fast. I'm telling you one thing, I think you're gonna have to very special display for this thing. Or someone's gonna tear it off the wall. <laughs> You're gonna be so excited by it. Um, now I will, I'll reveal the painting. It's making my hand shake. How you expected the painting to be? I, I expected it would be something that would be totally baffling, I which it is. I expected it to be dark, and it's creepy. I mean, it's not... Well, it's a dark, mysterious picture, isn't it? It's very general. mysterious. But what I see standing back here is a figure who has her legs... Or oh, legs I see what crossed. you're saying. See, there's one foot on the ground there, and then you can see the knee coming out from here, and her foot yeah. is slightly pointed. Yeah. And I would say it's female simply because of the silhouette that it makes against the light. He's certainly being provocative, we know that. He's using the title. He's using it in a very provocative manner. It could be more that the title is symbolic yes. of, of some part of him. Yes, I think what it's doing is naming the bedroom as having some connection with Jack the Ripper. He may be saying that he is Jack the Ripper and that it is his bedroom. Um, it's also, 1908 is a year after the Camden Town murder, which I believe he committed um, in 1907. So this might be in the Camden Town area, but who knows? He was painted at Mornington Crescent. Mornington well, Crescent, yeah. well, that's where he lived. Oh, well, in that yeah. case, it's, it is Mornington Crescent. <laughs> that's even worse. So those are um, houses, Georgian houses with... Um, well, if that's Mornington Crescent and that's where he lives and it's Jack the Ripper's bedroom, again, that's part of the tease, because that was his house. Yes. You know, if I, if I painted my bedroom in my house and called it Jack the Ripper's bedroom, then you should really worry about me. <laughs> I'm absolutely positively sure that Walter Richard Sickert was Jack the Ripper. If I were not 100% sure, I would not have pursued this case to its bitter end. 
but I believe that it's important to see how far we can go with evidence as old. It isn't even about identifying the killer's Walter Sickert anymore. To me, it is a given that he is Jack the Ripper. But what I think is important now is what can we learn from this man that might teach us more about psychopaths? That's what matters. Out there, there is an element who is going to believe this nonsense, that Sickert was the Ripper. Some lunatic will go in the Tate or somewhere else and slash a canvas because he was Jack the Ripper. This is the sort of thing, that, this is the sort of nonsense which actually triggers this behavior. And there is this element out there who will believe it. If I were wrong about Walter Sickert, I want to know that. Even after six million dollars and 13 months of working myself to death, because I would never, ever want to accuse somebody of any crime, much less serial murders and dismemberments. And if I found evidence right now that completely exonerated Walter Sickert, I would have to accept it, I would admit it, I would go back to being a waitress. Because <laughs> my career would probably be over with. I'm pretty convinced so far, most homicides that are put together really sweetly, that come together nicely, are not a smoking gun. What they are is a collection of innumerable pieces of a puzzle that you put together. No one thing by itself being enough of a connection to say absolutely that John Brown did it, but you spin a web, a web of statistical possibilities that you were driven to the conclusion that A must have done it. Well, I think Sickert would very definitely have a lot of explaining to do in court. I think Patricia has marshaled a stunning amount of information. We'd certainly bring him in as, as a suspect, and I think I could certainly present a case to a grand jury and get an indictment to take him to trial. As a novelist, she has used that obsessional sense of the Ripper's life and, and Sickert's life and woven a psychological portrait of Sickert, which is fascinating, almost brilliant and Dickensian, but to me a work of fiction, not a fact. You know, she very well may be right. I can't prove she's wrong. And unfortunately, I can't prove absolutely she's right. But considering what we're doing in terms of looking at a case that's 114 years old, I haven't seen a better theory. I do not want to live with this any longer. It is not a joy, it is not a pleasure, it's necessary. I'm very proud of what the team has done, of everybody who has helped in this, but I'm gonna go back to my own life now. But it wasn't over yet. At last, I was face to face with Walter Sickert or as I now think of him, Jack the Ripper. Did you see the, the, I mean, the look in his eyes for a minute there when his eyes cut off to the right? Just this cold, sinister look in them. And I'm thinking, you know, even up until probably several years before his death, you can just feel what a self-centered, unfeeling son of a bitch he is.